Chadwick's death hit me super hard. And I think that, you know, just being real, uh, I had a rough week last week. And to be honest with you, I mean, like, let's just be real. We're all having a rough 2020. It is not the best. Okay. Um, and so uh, Saturday, uh, I was uh, at a, I was just in a, a bad place with it. Now, I don't regret doing the stream on Saturday. I thought it was a kind of cool moment to share with you guys, but uh, not super pumped about uh, how emotional I was in that stream. I was very emotional. And so today, you know, it, nobody, we hadn't, we had not done a video about Chadwick. We had not really done anything public other than some social media posts and things like that, right? And so today, it was like, well, you, you got to, you got to say something and you got to be public about it. You know what I mean? You got to be public about it and you got to make your points. But also, I can't cry like I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I got to try to keep it together up here, okay? So uh, we're going to keep it together. And if I come across a little, uh, despondent, or if I come across uh, a little bit crass today, it is only because I just can't go there. I'm I'm gonna try not to go there emotionally because if I do, it'll it'll just be it'll it'll really destroy me. You know what I mean? Uh, and so I want to sort of repeat some of the things I said on Saturday, but before the wider audience, um, we owe Chadwick an incredible debt. And, you know, it, we found out, you know, Friday and everything happened. It happened really, really fast. And I think m myself, like many of you, uh, we spent a, a good bit of time watching other people's reactions and, and, and watching interviews and, and hearing what other people had to say that were close to Chadwick, uh, you know, a after we found out that he had gone. And so he had been fighting this battle in silence. for like the past four years. And uh, that just really gets me, man. Like that just really gets me because it just shows this kind of awareness, this kind of grace, really. It's the best way I can say it is grace. Uh, this kind of grace that he had as a human being that is very rare. It is a very rare quality. And in the face of his own mortality like i've been seeing some wild shit dude like I, I watched or i read something where there was an interview where somebody was talking about how he put on all the size for black panther then he stripped it away for a different role then he had to put it all back on again for a different thing and they were like somebody at the, the interview literally said like you you're really you're really going through the ringer and like chadwick laughs and says you have no idea you you have no idea someday i'll live to tell the tale and it's just crazy. Like, you look back at a lot of these different examples, or the fact that he had had went to help children for Make-A-Wish while he was dying of cancer. And he didn't let anybody know. He didn't want to burden us with his struggle. You know? And uh, it's just a really, really special... A unique and special soul. And uh, I, I just... Look, I, I can't imagine what it's like for his family right now. And I can't imagine what it's like for those that were close to him. Honestly, I can't imagine what it's like for some of these people that have worked closely with him. Did you guys see what Ryan Coogler said? I mean, I had assumed that a lot of people knew about this. This dude was having surgery all the way back at Black Panther 1. I had assumed that people knew. Ryan Coogler was completely unaware. Completely unaware. And you read like these comments of people, and this man just, he didn't want to burden anyone with that struggle. And he also knew that the moment and what he represented to so many different people was bigger than himself. It was, it was bigger than even his mortality and I think honestly I, I keep seeing and I keep hearing the same thing from people and it is this it is this really rare rare admiration saint like you know it, the, it recontextualizes everything and what he did if this had never happened what he did was already monumental. Monumental. 
But when you go back and recontextualize it, it becomes something more than that. You know? And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you don't know what you got till it's gone. I don't think, and there were obviously people that knew this. I didn't know it. There were obviously people that knew. You just, you didn't know what a special human being that was, that was putting that struggle on his back, walking that walk, not burdening us in an age of celebrity where so many cele- and and you know look everybody does things differently it's all it's literally all good i'm i'm really not trying to shame and i'm not trying to but you guys know what i mean there's some there's some people out there that leverage their celebrity for like it feels good and just that base level serotonin thing and all this stuff like there's just a lot of that out there And, you know, uh, Chadwick just didn't, not only did he not participate in that, but the amount of forethought, fortitude uh, required for him to do all of the things that he was doing with that smile on his face, he walked with such grace, man. He walked with such grace. And, you know, I watched I watched a thing with uh, RDJ. RDJ was talking about this, this, like, this other stratosphere that Chadwick was in. You know, just coming off of Black Panther being the incredible success that it was. And the way he would just walk around set, there was this, like, l- luminosity to him. There was this almost ethereal air of grace around him and yet he was so humble and it's just it you know hard to say what was going on inside of him or what was the strat you know we know he is a man of faith and i think that in a lot of ways he probably felt like I have a divine responsibility. You know, he was he was gifted this this beautiful opportunity at the right time too. At the right time. This is what's really fucking with me. This is why it's really fucking with me. Is because I don't personally feel it's an accident that that guy is Jackie Robinson. You know what I mean? It is T'Challa. I don't think it's an accident. And I don't think Chadwick thought it was an accident either. Your beliefs are, are whatever they, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. But I'm just telling you that from my perspective, it's just, it's really fucking with me. Like, it's really, it is really messing with me uh, in a way that I didn't anticipate. You know, um, and I just feel really indebted to him. And uh, I, I, there is certainly a void. Like the thing is, it, you know, and when we get into uh, some of the ramification talk, right? And people want to know, well, what does Marvel do now? Or uh, you know, can they recast? Can they do all these things? I don't even want to shame people for going there because it's a natural. It, it is a natural uh, next question, you know. Um, and I, and I think that uh, like, you know, uh, many fans and publications and and just different things, it has been a weird couple of days, man. You know, there's been some people that were right away, you know, screen rant did that article right away. Then there's people online talking about it. There's people shaming people for talking about it and all this, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm not here to take any sort of moral high ground. Um, I think those questions are natural. And if we get some of those questions in Q and A today, I'll talk about them. You know what I mean? Like, I'll I'll absolutely talk about them. But I think that there is just absolutely a massive void. No matter what decision Marvel makes, there is a massive void left in the MCU. And there's this massive void left in all of our hearts, man. Like, this is... Uh, 
uh, absolutely tragic. You know what I mean? Absolutely tragic. And, uh, yeah, my heart goes out to the family. Uh, and just everybody, uh, that's grieving, man. It, it, you know, obviously 2020 has been really rough and there's a lot of conflict out there. I think there's a lot of reasons for us to feel conflicted, to, to, to feel like the stakes are really high, to feel like things are going in a bad direction, all these sort of things. I think it's okay to feel all of that. And I think that particularly at a time right now where there's so much tension, um, people are at all sorts of different weird places with their perspective and, and with what they, how they think they should act in the context of today. And even amid, it's like so, it, this is what keeps messing with me, is that even amidst this incredible tragedy, Chadwick was still able to give one last gift, you know? And I think it's so weird because in his mind, his life was a gift. I don't think you battle on privately with this kind of a thing and and do all the incredible things that he did without feeling that reverence for that gift that you have. Uh, And what he gave to us through his art is another gift, a gift that will live on beyond him, that does live on beyond him. It's incredible. And I felt like it was super cathartic and super healthy. All of the different people that I saw that have been affected by him that knew him in different capacities and just you I, I know ne- I have not seen a single video or post about like oh yeah but he did this oh yeah but he was this kind of a guy or oh he would do it nah man seemed like he was the type of dude that always rose to the occasion always went the extra mile put other people's needs and wants above his own the ultimate servant and there was no higher calling than service and uh that's all I got, guys. That's all I got. Like, I I don't know what else to say. It is... It is a very strange and empty feeling. You know what I mean? And I think that, uh, you know, his his last gift was maybe an example. Maybe a bar to, to aim for. 